certainly appreciate that, that little chorus. Yeah. Yeah. And the first song that we, thank you, Barbara. Yeah. The first song that we sang in the, the second verse begins with these words. For me, it was in the garden he prayed. For me, it was in the garden he prayed. That has to do with intercession. It has to do with the Lord Jesus offering the prayer of his heart to the Father on our behalf. I uh, it just, just so happened I read Genesis 18 recently for a class I'm involved in. And, uh, Enjoying, but I I want to look at a portion of Genesis 18 tonight to uh, stir our thinking a little bit about the uh, ministry of intercessory prayer. And uh, Genesis 18 is is where. God and Abraham do some business together, I guess, <laughs> is one way of putting it. Uh, it, it Genesis 18, uh, beginning with verse 17. And uh, I, I, I confess to you that I often print out the scriptures larger than my Bible offers them to me. There's a re there's a reason for that. There are two reasons for that: a right and a left eye. But uh, Genesis eighteen seventeen. Then the Lord said, "Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him, so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord." by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he's promised him. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grievous, that I will go down and see what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom. We're kind of in the middle of the story there. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away? and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city because of five people? If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again... He spoke to him, what if only 40 are found there? And he said, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, now that I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. 
Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only ten can be found there? He answered, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. Now, I think this is a, a, a good example of some principles of intercessory prayer. So it, it, it's a, something that provides for us an opportunity to learn. And let me just make this comment. I think all of us owe a great debt to other people who have prayed for us Amen. throughout the course of our lives. Yeah. And, and unless the Lord chooses to let us know about it in eternity, I don't know that we'll ever know about all the people who have prayed for us, but we have been blessed. I, I came across some questions that were raised regarding this matter of challenging us, challenging me, to be more fervent in my prayers for other people. These were the questions. Uh, the first was, are we consistently, seriously, and committedly involved in praying for others? And who, and who are you praying for? Putting some names and faces with it, not, not just the, you know, ge in general. Second question, are there people who would notice a change in their lives if we stopped praying for them? Yeah. That resonated with me when I read that. A third question, are there preachers and missionaries whose ministries would be less effective if God's people ceased to pray? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the last question is uh, uh, kind of a short question. Do our prayers affect anybody for God? Well, yeah. Yeah. If I understand what the scriptures say. In intercession, we come before the throne of God on behalf of other people. Yeah. And um, I know you to be a praying people. And, and I, I know there are people whose lives are being affected by your praying. Again, here in Genesis 18, Abraham comes before the Lord on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah, whom most people, just based on what they knew of the place, would have written off and said, I, 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 they, I can imagine some people saying they don't deserve to be prayed for. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad people didn't think that way about me. I'm glad they prayed for me. We, we have demonstrated here in, in this text that, first of all, that intercession uh, rests upon a relationship that the man of God had with God. He was his son, and he came before him. He believed God. He was a man of faith, if you will. That's probably a, 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 certainly an appropriate way to refer to Abraham here. He was a man of faith, and that faith had been credited to him as righteousness. But he, like the rest of us, have that relationship based on God's grace, but he had a relationship with God, and he came before the Father on behalf of others. Uh, his his uh, being able to pray to God, of course, is based on God's willingness to be approached. I, I found it interesting that the Lord approached him before he approached the Lord here in this, in this particular instance. God stirred his heart. God raised the issue, <laughs> if you will. And Abraham responded 
by offering his prayers on behalf of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, he came before, Abraham came before the Lord based on what he knew of the Lord's character and interceded on, on behalf of these very, very needy people. He recognized that God was a God of holiness. There's, there's a sin issue to be dealt with here. And, uh, and we're, we're told here that Sodom's sins were, uh, were offensive, were grievous to the Lord. And Abraham prayed in light of the fact that he knew God was a righteous God. He was a holy God but he was also a God of mercy. And so he came before the Lord and lifted these up. He knew God was a just God. He says, shall not the judge of all the earth do what's just or what's, what's right? And he knew that God would do what was right. And he knew that God in this great ocean of mercy that he has cared about these people. We, we see something else here, and I know, I know my thoughts are fairly quick. You don't usually mind quick, but his intercession, I think, depended on um, persistence. Uh, over and over and over again, he came before the Lord. Lord, if there's five less than 50, would you spare them? And right on down the line, right on down to 10. Uh, we are uh, often tempted to give up when we don't see the results immediately to our praying. I dare say there are some people sitting here in the sound of my voice who've been praying for loved ones for decades, yeah, yeah, and that is a right thing to do. Yeah, we appeal to the Lord's mercy. We we appeal to Him uh, being the God who loves us in spite of our not deserving that love, and so we continually become come before Him, persisting in our prayers. And that is a good and a right thing to do. Let me, let me just leave you with a, a quote from S.D. Gordon. Um, those of you who have done much reading on prayer will no doubt have come across uh, some of his writings. But he, he said, you can do more than pray after you've prayed. But you cannot do more than pray until you've prayed. Yeah, Doug, I've heard you quote that before in years past. Yeah. You can do more than pray after you pray. The man start there. Ladies start there. <laughs> and, and persistently come before the Father who has stirred our hearts, laid people upon our hearts. And uh, he, will, he will use our prayers to accomplish his purposes.